Good morning, my name is Jonathan Norman from the Major Projects Knowledge Hub and I'm interviewing Martin Paver who is CEO of Projecting Success and founder of the London Project Data Analytics Meetup which is a community of around 1800 people which is expanding rapidly. Martin, before this interview we were talking about data and analytics and you gave me an analogy of, of a, a rally driver and I thought it'd be a nice place to start the interview. Do, do you want to just explain the analogy? So thanks a lot Jonathan, yeah. So in terms of rally driving, what we tend to do as project managers, we're all sort of well qualified international and potentially world class rally drivers. And what we tend to do, we tend to take out the passenger seat of the car, we fill it with manuals and then we put signposts all the way down the road every 10 feet and then say to the rally driver, can you drive the car quickly down that road, reading those books and the signs as you go. What we also say is, as soon as you get 500 feet down the road, could you stop and we'll do an independent review and we'll check the car over and we'll check you over and we'll check the performance. I'm not quite sure that that is the best way for a successful project management. I think if we flip this around, what we're actually saying is what we want to do is to enable that project manager to drive that car as fast as he possibly can inside of the capabilities which he's working to and the conditions of the road. And what the project manager is interested in is which parts of those roads can he go quickly on and which parts of it is fraught with danger. And for me, that is in the data set. And I think once we start to analyse that data set, you start to understand which parts of that project have got a predisposition to something going wrong. So a predisposition to variance, that might be schedule variance or cost variance. Once we start to understand that concept overall, there's a huge amount we can do. Excellent. So if, if I pick up that analogy and I ask you to look at the road ahead as it stands now and where we are with data and understanding data, what does it look like at, at the moment? How does the road compare with how you would like it to be? In terms of where we are at the moment, I think that um, there's very limited data which we can use, which is aggregated data. So we don't have an AA roadmap of this data. We don't understand which data is good, which data is bad. And in some cases, we don't even know where the data is. So I think the first step in this process is to start to aggregate this data. Once we start to put it together in volume, we can start to apply these advanced techniques, machine learning, artificial intelligence, Aggression, that sort of thing and then we can start to analyze which parts of those projects are likely to go wrong as a lead indicator and this is not about responding to things when they've gone wrong it's saying let's predict what's going to go wrong in advance and that's understanding from a probabilistic distribution based upon the specific conditions of your project because that's what machine learning does it looks at those factors and those parameters which then start to influence your use case and then you can work out, on the basis of all of that information, what is the call to action? What do you need to do? Where do you need to spend your money? And it's for me, it's looking at the risk analysis of everything that's gone before and not somebody's risk register. It's the integration of that risk register over time and the influence of that risk register on reality. So what actually changed? So you predicted a probability and an impact of X, uh, did you get it right or did you get it wrong? Was it better or was it worse? What caught you out? If we can start to encapsulate all of that, we can understand what caught everybody out over time. And you've got a probabilistic distribution over that, and then you can start to work out, and it's almost like a craps table, is you're trying to work out where you spread your bets in terms of your contingency, and what you do in terms of the investment of effort. And that's just on risk, and we can do the same with schedule, with benefits, etc. So looking at the way you describe the current situation and where it, we're aiming for i can see that's that's quite a complicated outcome um, so i have two questions really the first is if i was working for an organization that were looking to make use of their data and understand that data yeah. where would you start and the second is moving forward from there what are the main obstacles to the process to being in a position to really use your data i think the first starting point is if you want to buy into this future vision. If you do, this is not just a case of flipping on artificial intelligence. You need the data set, you need the connected data set, it needs to be quality, it needs to be linked to the use cases. 
So I think the first step is to understand what are your priority use cases? What are the sort of things that you're trying to solve? What's the biggest pain point you've got inside of your organization? If you've got that, you can build out the use case into a, a data model and you can say, I need these bits of data to answer the specific use case. If you've then got the data model, you can start to populate the data model and to understand the quality, completeness and timeliness of that data and say, uh, can I take that data back and correlate it back to the use case? If I can do that, then I can start to solve my first generation of problems. I then just build the data out and build it out and build it out. And it's the more connected nature of that data, like for instance, what's the impact of a risk on schedule? What's the impact of a risk on cost? What's the impact of a risk in terms of resourcing, uh, project delivery, performance, etc.? It's the connected nature of that data that you're really interested in. Right. Can, can you give me any examples without betraying commercial confidence in, in the kind of work that you've done in the past of, of what that initial use case look, has looked like? What kind of things have people been looking at? So I'm doing a piece of work at the moment, for instance, and there's a lot of organisations struggling with this notion of lessons learned. And uh, for a lot of companies, it just doesn't work. Uh, they finish up with some trite statements and fairly anodyne statements, which are very difficult to exploit for a seasoned project manager. So what we say is let's break that down. Let's work out what the use case is associated with lessons learned. If we can do that, we can say it's not the lesson that we're interested in. It's the variance associated with the lesson and the situation associated with that variance. So for instance, was there a trigger event? Is that trigger event uh, something which is fairly common and something which you can anticipate in the future? Or was it a one-off event? What's the implications in terms of schedule and cost? And is there some lead indicators which you can build into your data set so you can start to see it coming in the future? If you've got that, it's not something that's stuck with 20,000 other things in a data set. It's then fed back to you as a context-based insight, not lessons learned. It's leveraging that experience and applying it to the specific circumstances of your project as lead indicators. Excellent. You, you talked a, a bit initially about the, the, the question of the, the nature and the design and the quality of the data. Uh, I think one of the other issues is, is ownership of data um, and this question of is it the client's data, is it the contractor's data, is it data from some third party organisation with whom you're working? How, how are organisations addressing these, these questions of intellectual property and data ownership? I think there's a massive sea change across the industry actually in terms of data. So at the moment, there's a lot of organizations who see that data is intellectual property and it might give them an edge in terms of machine learning. And I see organizations, small startups for instance, has got a really great idea and they've got to spend months uh, knocking on doors, extracting data from organizations so they can pool it so it's big enough so you can apply a machine learning. So. We've got this sort of fork in the road now. Do organisations keep hold of their data and say it's all uh, proprietary data, or do we start to say, let's start to pool data? If we pool data, what's the conditions associated with that pooling? Uh, can we get to a situation whereby we're putting some constraints on it? If it's sensitive data, then can you ring fence that data component? Uh, it's sensitive and you might only want to share that with a university, but the rest of it you can share across the community. So it's for me, I am now seeing this inflection point in the industry, is they're realising if you want to go on this journey about advanced data analytics and the benefits and the transformational benefits of it, you've got to start to pull data. So I think that's got to be done in a phase way, it's not a big bang way because it won't work. It's got to be done in a phase way, we've got to build the use cases out, probably start with something associated with lessons learned, build it out, and then start to phase into risk and phase into schedule and the various other parts of this connected data set. Ultimately, if you've got trust in that community, you can put all of your project data in. Because for me, if you look at projects such as Crossrail, for instance, it's an exhaust plume of project data, which has got no end benefit for anybody else. As soon as Crossrail's finished, what happens with that data set? And for me, it sits in a cupboard or, or it sits in an archive somewhere and we're not exploiting it. We need to change those behaviours. Excellent. I know that one of the things that you've been doing to, to start changing the behaviour is, is to 
initiate these, these data hackathons and get people together um, over the course of a year, I guess in London mainly, to, to kind of do stuff with data. Well, what's been your experience of that? So I think it's fascinating actually, it's been a great journey because it's 12 months ago, December 17 was the first meetup and I weren't quite sure where it was going to go, I thought I'd get to about 500 people after a year and we're nudging at 2,000 people now and that's in 12 months and that just shows you all this pent up demand out there it's for people saying we get the principle, we get behind it and we see the size of the opportunity. Across the world, in the next 10 years, we're spending $100 trillion on major infrastructure projects. The size of this opportunity, if we can apply advanced data analytics and leverage all that experience of the past, it's huge. And that ignites the professional imagination. So what we've done with the meetup is we bring people together who really get this vision. They really start to share it. We bring some very wise people along. We've got a chap coming this evening to talk about all the project data analytics on the Tour de France and their ability to predict the top three to about 70% confidence every day. And those sort of insights really start to inspire the project management community in terms of the art of the possible. I think that's starting to bleed out into organisations now and I'm seeing people knocking on our doors saying, what can we do to get involved in this? So we saw that was a meetup, and then we said, there's a lot of people out there who want some sort of practical experience of the application with real data and they don't know where to start so we run master classes on the day what we also do is we get a lot of data and we had a 14 data so the road around cambridge we had a lot of data from them we had data from sir robert McAlpine, that's construction data and we've got some data that we mined from australia and the states as well so it's real project data and you sat down at a table with a data scientist data analyst somebody who understands machine learning We've got Microsoft in the room, Azure cloud, uh, cloud services, we've got domain experts who really understand construction for instance, and we've also got project management. And by bringing those people together, we really get some magic happening in terms of unlocking that data and just firing people up. And once we start to fire people up, I can't change this myself Jonathan, this needs to be all of the community working together and when we work together we will ignite this change. And it's starting to happen, and I think it's going to get massive in 2019. Interesting. I mean, it seems from where you're coming from that a lot of what's required is this idea of, of visualisation. I'm not talking about data visualisation, but I'm talking about making senior people in, in large projects understand the potential of what they can do so that they will invest the effort and the time in um, looking at their data and starting to design um, an approach to data that will allow them to to do meaningful analytics. And I think that's one of our biggest sort of challenges at the moment is to say to senior management, this works. Because unless you've got a big enough data set, you can't demonstrate it and you can't get a big enough data set until people buy into it. So we're stuck in this chicken and egg situation at the moment. So we've got to start small and we've got to demonstrate that we can do this in some sectors. And I think if we look at other industries, we look at medicine and we look at legal, it's happening there and there's loads of analogies we can draw and we're bringing people into the meetup to demonstrate those analogies but we can't do it in project management until we make that leap of faith and start to share data for the benefit of the collective and you can protect it we found a way of protecting data down to component level so you can put the permissions on a, a, a component level which means you can share this data openly so i think it's a journey this is not a switch it's not a binary switch it's a multiple year journey to this destination of advanced data analytics which then changes the shape of project management it changes what a risk manager does in the future it changes what a scheduler does it changes where the project manager starts to get insights and it's evidence driven decision making whereas at the moment a lot of it is instinct and intuition Interesting. If I, if I pick up on that, that question of protecting data, because I think that will be one of many people's concerns, is about the data leaking out and somehow causing damage. Do, do you want to say a little bit more about the, how that process works? So we've thought sort of long and hard on this, and I've invested uh, quite a lot of money in terms of getting ISO 27001 certification. So if I'm talking to the meetup community, I really understand this from grassroots level. 
and it's a key part of making it work is to make sure we understand all of the issues about sharing data responsibly and securely. So I think that's the first issue is about understanding which bits of data you need to anonymize, which bits you can pseudomize, aggregate, etc. And that's all linked back to the use case. So as long as you link it back to the use case and you're working with the owners of the data and it's always their data, that's the principle we're using, it's always their data. And if they pull their data, they can always take it back out again. It's a matter of making sure that we aggregate this data and then all these innovators out there can then uh, plug into it, buying into a set of security conditions. And that might be investing in a, a technical interface which means they can only see certain things in that data set based upon the use case. I doubt very much everybody will be able to see everything. I don't think that scenario is ever going to work. It's never going to be open data because some of this data is very sensitive data. Uh, it's got reputational damage. There's commercial sensitivity with it. So I think the notion of open data in project management is probably a, a naive one. I think that some parts of it's going to be open and some parts are going to be really sensitive we'll have to layer it up based upon those specific use cases and that's for the owners of the data to specify what those conditions need to be.